is a very special edition of Check-In. 25 years ago, the Maastricht Treaty went into effect, founding the European Union. To commemorate that occasion, I'm going to be hopping back and forth between Germany and France. While spending time in Freiburg and Strasbourg, I hope to discover a few things about the two nations' idiosyncrasies and similarities. My journey begins in Freiburg in Germany's southwest. This region has been greatly influenced by the French. It was even under French rule for a time. In the 17th century, Sun King Louis XIV had a fortress built on this hill called the Schlossberg. There's not much left of the fortification today, but it's worth climbing up to the site to get an overview of the city. One of the many advantages of the European Union is that its inner borders have long ago ceased to constitute an obstacle for travelers and citizens. I'm all the more excited to find out what awaits me on my border hopping route. How much of France will I find in Freiburg and how much of Germany over in Strasbourg? One absolute must-see in Freiburg is the famous Minster. A Gothic masterpiece, this cathedral was built between the 13th and 16th centuries. And here's a fun fact. When seeking other employment, architects and laborers had to prove they'd worked on the cathedral. A clever way was devised to do that. They just had to say where to find the devil hiding on the cathedral's main entrance. And if you'd like to hopnop with the local crowd, you should pop by the market on the Cathedral Square. Here you'll find stands selling products from all around the region. And that includes France. Mmm, fromage. Northwest of Freiburg, still in Germany, you'll find the Kaiserstuhl, a low mountain range of volcanic origin. The region is one of the warmest in Germany and best known for its wine. Perfect excuse for a tasting. But it's not just your taste buds that are in for a treat. Along the Upper Rhine, you'll also find some amazing architecture, like at the Avril Vineyards, which carry on century-old traditions in modern facilities. Was macht denn den What's Wein? so special about wine from the Kaiserstuhl? Can you tell it's from here by the smell? The Kaiserstuhl is an inactive volcano. That's why we have very interesting soil formations. We have plenty of Lys, but underneath that there's very dark decomposed volcanic soil. It's really crucial for us. Our best wines grow well in that dark soil. And we think you can taste it in our wine. The minerality, which is typical of Kaiserstuhl Burgundy, you'll be hard-pressed to find a wine like that anywhere else in Germany. Sounds great. I'm picking up honey? Yes, a trace of honey, exactly. What else does the expert smell? Well, I can detect a note of honeydew melon. It does have a rather fruity taste. There are some slight traces of vanilla from the wooden barrel. And when you take a sip, you get... Um, it tastes completely different than it smells. Exactly. The flavor of local fruit slowly reveals itself. The taste of ripe apples, ripe pears, combined with a really nice minerality. And that flavor stays in your mouth for a very long time. Yeah. You must try this, it's delicious. By now I've crossed the border from Germany to France. I'm in Strasbourg. 
Alsace's regional capital has a long history. The Celts were here as well as the Romans, the Huns and the Franconians. In the Middle Ages, Strasbourg was part of the Holy Roman Empire of German nations. And Strasbourg's cathedral does bear a striking resemblance to the one in Freiburg. No wonder they were built around the same time. Where are you from? Atlanta, Georgia in the United States. Oh, beautiful. So this is completely different. What do you what do you like about it? Oh, I love the age, the history. So charming, beautiful. Uh, I'm from China. Cool. What's your impression of the city? It's the first time I come here and I, I feel amazing with this church. I love the earth. We love Europe. We always try to get over here from Argentina when we have time. Another tourist hotspot is the Petit France Quarter with its half-timbered houses. Strasbourg's old town has been declared a World Cultural Heritage Site by UNESCO. That's also the case with the so-called New Town, where you'll find monuments from the times of the German Empire in the 19th century. Hello, Hello and welcome to your parliament, the European Parliament. The city of Strasbourg is the official seat of the European Parliament. We're right here, below this ray of light. There's always this wow factor when you step inside. Even those of us who've worked here for years never get over it. Where do the interpreters sit? The interpreters sit down there in those booths. We currently have 24 official languages. Visitors have a right to understand what members of parliament are saying. Here in the plenary hall, there is room for 748 MEPs and 650 visitors. We end our tour on the roof, overlooking France and Germany. Over there you can see the Black Forest, and there are the Vosges Mountains, though they're harder to see. And there's the cathedral. The German tour between Freiburg and Strasbourg ends right on the border, in this case, the Rhine River. It's a symbolic place, a bridge connecting two countries that were more than once at war. This is the Passerelle de Deux Rives, the bridge of the two banks. A bridge crossing a border river there may not be a better symbol for European unity, a thing I've learned a lot about on my trip from Germany to France and back. One could almost forget that the European Union as we know it today has only been around for 25 years. Happy birthday and keep up the good work.